I recently finished watching a new show called Extraordinary, and it brought to light an issue that I've been having with movies and television as of late. And it's what I'm simply going to label the protagonist problem. So first, what is a protagonist? Well, Webster's defines it as follows, the principal character in a literary work, such as a drama or a story. It's the main character. That's simple enough. So what's the problem? The short story is that protagonists these days are, well, a little bit bad. But obviously, you know, that's a bit of a generalization. And I'm sure you're here for a more in-depth explanation. So stay with me for a moment. There's a pattern emerging in movies and television, and that is that the same character seems to keep popping up again and again and again and again. Now, I'm sure those characters might have different names. They might look a bit different, but once you strip back the superficial, you're left with a pretty similar bunch. Like I mentioned, I've just finished watching a show called Extraordinary. Extraordinary follows the life of a 25-year-old girl called Jen, who lives in a world where everyone at the age of 18 manifests some sort of superpower. That is, of course, except Jen herself, who is obviously 25 now and has not yet found her power. She then spends the series looking for some way of manifesting her own power. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that sounds sounds pretty good. Sounds sounds like a pretty interesting premise. And some of you might be thinking, that sounds a little bit familiar. And you're both right. And that's because that is pretty much an identical premise to My Hero Academia. They may share similar, if not pretty much identical premises, but that is where the similarities end. And I, I think that's actually kind of a bad thing. The protagonist of the show, Jen, is a little bit dislikable. Now, is this because she's a woman? No. Is this because she's Irish? Maybe a little bit, but no, she's just not a very nice person. Her character is hypocritical, narcissistic, short-tempered, complacent, selfish, and manipulative. Not ideal traits, to be sure, and just off the top of my head, those very same adjectives can also be attributed to a number of other dislikable characters. People like Jen, a different Jen, but Jen from She-Hulk, Galadriel from Rings of Power, Velma from Velma. But these same adjectives can also be attributed to a number of characters who are widely beloved. Think about Basil Fawlty or Dennis Reynolds or, well, indeed, pretty much anyone from Always Sunny. So what's the difference between these likable characters and these dislikable characters? Well, number one, good writing. But number two, it's intention and awareness. Take Fawlty Towers, for example. Basil is objectively a terrible person. He is afflicted with all of the aforementioned adjectives. Take season two, episode five of Fawlty Towers. Basil forgot his anniversary the previous year and to redeem himself, he planned a surprise party for his wife. But being the vindictive man that he is, always looking to get one up on his wife, he decides to let his wife stew in the opinion that he's once again forgotten. And as a result of this, he ends up screwing it up for himself and is punished for his actions and is made the butt of the joke. He displays negative behavior, is subjected to repercussions, and as a result, the audience can identify the humanity within the situation and subsequently find humor within it, which then endears the audience to the character. Because although you may not be as vindictive as faulty, you can empathize with the process of doing something bad and being punished as a result. It's not a directly shared experience, but it's relatable. Now let's contrast that with an arc from this new show, Extraordinary. There's a moment within the show when Jen's best friend realizes that since they were young, Jen has actually been holding her back in many ways, and in some cases using her, and this causes conflict. This is when you would expect Jen's character to find some fault within herself, usually by way of being humbled or be made the butt of some joke, or coming to some sort of realization and becoming a better person in the process and eventually rectifying the situation cordially. But this is when she begins to exhibit even worse behavior, cutting off a drunk girl's hair, breaking into buildings, urinating on furniture, just to name a few. This leads to her being abandoned by everyone. And it's at this moment that she sulks back to her best friend, who then welcomes her with open arms. She exhibited negative behavior, continued to exhibit even worse behavior, and is then rewarded for it. And we, the audience, are subsequently left with resentment for the character. As we've seen what she's done, we haven't seen any humanity within her actions. She hasn't faced any repercussions. She hasn't exhibited remorse or even apologized. And the show has then patted her on the back and let her continue on as normal. We've not been taken on a journey, a narrative. We've been taken in a small circle and then been asked to forget everything we've just seen. I mean, sure, the casual viewers may be distracted by the abundance of pee-pee poo-poo jokes, but... To the people paying attention, the audience that you should be rewarding, 
that's insulting because you're made to root for someone you ultimately don't like because they're objectively a bad person. And I say pee pee poo jokes. Like, now, there are a lot of moments in the show that are genuinely funny. You will get a few laughs out of the show, but there is an excess of pee pee poo poo vagina tampon butt crack jokes. Uh, you know, and every other joke is a juvenile innuendo. And look, I'm all for that kind of humor in moderation. It wears very quickly. But the point I'm trying to make is that all of these characters, for the most part, share the same traits, yet some of them are beloved by audiences and some of them are utterly despised. You may say, ah, I see the correlation. The ones you like are men and the ones you don't like are women. And this is because I'm wildly sexist. No, uh, it's just purely coincidence that all of the characters that I've listed that are beloved are men. But it is no coincidence that all of the characters I've listed that are disliked are women. In recent times, we've seen a large shift in character writing. You've probably noticed that the strong male protagonist is it's a bit of a rare species these days, and the majority of those roles that are left are occupied by Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he's a force of nature. You cannot stop him. And male characters that are featured are often mindless, emasculated punching bags. I'm thinking Lamont Rogers from Velma, Norville Rogers from Velma, Dennis from She-Hulk, and if they were established as strong male characters in years gone by, well, it's time to change that. Just look at Thor in Thor Love and Thunder. Hemsworth was in insane shape. Like, this guy actually looked like a god. But even kids were asking, what happened to Big Strong Lightning Man? He defeated Gore with a woman who has cancer and a bunch of kids who haven't eaten for days. These are usually the first people off the sinking ship. Look at, look, look at Elrond from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, a stoic ex-battle commander, herald of Gilgalad and founder of Rivendell. In Rings of Power, they made him a camp poet that falls in love with the dwarf's mineshaft. Now, I'm not saying that every single male character has to be an alpha that looks like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, even though at some point in the near future, every male character will look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson because every male character will be Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he's in literally everything. I'm not saying that all characters have to look like that. What I'm saying is that writers shouldn't feel hesitant writing characters like that, and they should leave alone any characters that already are like that. We don't need to turn every single big burly man into a Care Bear. But this creative injustice doesn't just stretch to male characters. They're coming after strong female characters too. I mean, we all know that Jennifer Lawrence famously became the first woman to ever get a role in an action movie. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie yeah. because mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. But after that, we had Trinity, Ripley, Eowyn, Sarah Connor, Buffy, not her, The Bride, Mulan, and the list goes on. But the current school of writers seem to think that in order to create a strong, powerful female character, they first need to remove anything from her that may be considered traditional. God forbid she has a husband and kids. Uh, gross. Am I right? And then, of course, you've got to make her a raging bitch because... That's cool now. But if you don't like a female character that's a terrible person, well, I guess it's a one-way ticket to bigot jail for you. You just you just don't understand that women are breaking the shackles of oppression one shitty role at a time. My only other theory is that this is an inside job from all the old guys who want the old days back. It's all propaganda to make women in entertainment look so insufferable that even women scream and beg to go back to the good old days of oppression. All I know is that women are getting a pretty terrible representation in entertainment at the moment, and it's at the hands of a few jaded, bitter people within the industry. Now, don't get it twisted, there are a lot of misogynists out there, but when you hear guys on the internet screaming about these characters, more often than not, they're not going after women, they're going after the poor portrayal of women. Some take it the wrong way and say like, oh, you just, you just can't stand to see a strong female character. It's like, no, we love these characters. We love Cersei Lannister, Lara Croft, the old one. We love these characters and we're sick of seeing these cheap imitations, these soulless characters that are championed as strong, powerful females. You're doing everyone a disservice. Entertainment has suffered because of it and the cherry on top is that you're making women look bad in the process as well. But what do I know? Let me know what you think. Have you noticed that uh, lead roles have been getting really bad recently? Women as well. Let me know what you think. How do you feel about the way that uh, women are represented in lead roles at the moment? Let me know down below. But in the meantime, subscribe, you bitch. I am now working with Raven Forge, the people who brought me my beautiful master sword. If you are looking for props from your favorite video games or movies, do go check the first line in the description below. They support me on this channel. So if you could go and support them, 
I would be much appreciative. The quality is outstanding, the prices are brilliant, and the guys really love what they do. So uh, you'll be getting a great service. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, go hit the first link in the description below and do take care of yourselves. Thank you very much. And as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Puzzlebon, Flunky, Jax, Brennus, Jindra, Koss, Texas Lawman, Infinite Dum Dum, ATS, and David, the Knights of my round table, the round table. Again, that sounds like my arsehole. I'm really sorry, guys. Tier two, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melsky, Said, MG Virgil, Kuno Sacco, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Michael Terpia, Hadziu, Yarn Witch, Mendicant, Bias, Dagger D69, nice. Michael, Jason Coward, Saint Nemo, and Ken. Thank you very much, my tier twos. And of course, a big shout out to the tier one members as well. Thank you all very much. Once again, I want to let you guys know that I really do appreciate your support. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you little bitch. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you real soon.